Today we're going to be discussing time signature and counting rhythms. Before we begin, we need to remind ourselves what exactly is a time signature. The top number in a time signature tells us how many beats are in each measure. The bottom number of a time signature tells us which note value gets the beat. In a 4-4 four, four time signature, we are being told that there are a total of four beats in each measure, and we are counting quarter notes. This is the same thing as saying we need a total of four quarter notes in each measure. A whole note is worth four beats. When we cut it in half, we get two half notes, each worth two beats. We can add them back together again to equal the same value as that original a whole note. When we split those half notes in half, we get four quarter notes. It takes two quarter notes to equal the same value as one half note. It takes four quarter notes to equal the same value as that original whole note. When we split a quarter note in half, we have eighth notes, which are each worth one half of a beat. It takes two eighth notes to equal the same value as one quarter note. It takes four eighth notes to equal the value of one half note, and eight eighth notes to equal the same value as one whole note. Now it's time for us to begin with our counting. Before we begin, I need to draw your attention to our time signature. Our time signature is 4-4, four, four, the same as saying four quarter notes in each measure. Above each rhythm, you will see four hearts. The hearts represent the beats that we find in music. The beat is the measurement of time. Just like anything else, when we count, we are going to start with the number one. So we're going to write the number one underneath our first rhythm. It doesn't really matter what rhythm that is. We would still always start with one. Then we're going to ask ourselves, well, what rhythm is this? This is a quarter note, which is worth one beat. So it takes up all of beat number one. That leaves us available to go to beat number two. Beat number two is another quarter note. Takes up all of beat number two. The next one is beat number three, taking up all of beat number three, and then beat number four, another quarter note, taking up all of beat number four. We would have been able to say in the past, ta, 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 ta. But now we're raising our vocabulary to a more intermediate and middle school, high school level, and we would clap and count our rhythm saying one, two, three, four. Here's another example. Again, in four, four time, we need four quarter notes, or the same value as four quarter notes for each measure. We're going to start with beat number one. It is a quarter note, so it takes up all of beat number one. The next thing that happens is beat number two. This is a set of eighth notes. Each eighth note is worth one half of the beat. So our first eighth note takes up the first half of the beat. The second half of the beat is going to be called and. It takes both halves to equal the same value of that one beat. The next one is beat number three, a quarter note, which takes up all of beat number three. And then another set of eighth notes, four and. First half of the beat is four, the second half of the beat is and. Here's another example where we have 4-4 four, four time, or a total of four quarter notes in each measure. Our first value is different from the ones we've seen before. As always, we start with number one, but this is a half note, and a half note is worth two full beats. So it's going to start at the beginning of beat number three, and, or I'm sorry, beat number one, and carry all the way through the end of beat number two. So we're going to write it just like what it sounds. It's beats number one through beat number two. That's where our sound lasts. Our next one happens on beat number three. So it's going to be three and, dividing that beat right in half, and beat four. This is a quarter rest. Quarter rest takes up one beat of time, but it is silent while it does so. So we would put parentheses around that number to let our reader know that that is going to be a beat of silence. Before, we might have said 
to TT rest. But now, using our new vocabulary, we can come and count this. We'll clap the rhythm and count it. So it's going to sound like this. One, three, and four. You'll notice that we did not say the number two. That is because beat number two happens within the same sound as beat number one. The sound began at the beat, beginning of beat number one and carried all the way through the end of beat two. It is not a separate sound, so it does not get to have its own number. Our next example has more of our rests. Again, four, four time, total of four quarter notes for each measure. We start out with beat one. It is a quarter note, taking up all of beat number one. Beat number two is a rest. It is a quarter rest, taking up all of beat number two, but it does it in silence, so we put our parentheses around the outside of that. The next one is three, set of eighth notes, so the first eighth note takes up the first half of beat number three. Second eighth note takes up the second half of beat number three, so we call it and, three and. That finishes all of beat three, so we can go on to beat number four. It is a quarter rest, taking up one beat of time, but it does it in silence, so we put parentheses around it. If we were to clap and say this normally, it would be ta, rest, tt, rest. But now, with our new vocabulary, we can count it and clap together. One, two, three, and four. And that is it for today.